Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to the Dollar Hour. I am Deontay Burton, Mr. Short Dollar himself. We've got an awesome show playing tonight. Tonight, I'm going to give you guys my basic business blueprint. And what my basic business blueprint is, this is pretty much what I give to all my clients that when they're getting ready to start a business, incorporate a business, this is the business blueprint that you follow in order to know other steps in regards to actual creating a business. You know, we're going from the inception of the idea of starting a company to going through all steps of incorporation, bank accounts, uh, websites, and all that stuff. So we're going to go through all of that. And again, this is my basic business blueprint. Like I said, I usually get this to, you know, uh, uh, certain customers and everything, but I just want to share this to you guys today, okay? Um, before I get started again, this is the Dollar Hour. I am Deontay Bird, Mr. Short Dollar himself. Tonight, the basic business blueprint. Um, you know, Mr. Short Dollar, we talk about personal finance, business, entrepreneurship, and real estate investing. Uh, right now, we're streaming live on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok, right? So, again, you know, the main vehicle that we play, uh, post everything is on the YouTube channel because that's where we got over 100, and, oh, well, hell, over 200 videos. I think, am I right? Over 200 videos on Mr. Yeah, yeah over 200 videos on 200. Mr. Short Dollar. So, dealing with, you know, purse finance, grants, uh, entrepreneurship, all kind of great information. So, make sure you go to the YouTube channel, Mr. Short Dollar. That's the main hook for all the videos to a uh, 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 hanging at. We've had a lot of response to a video we put out a couple of days ago um, in regards to a $20,000 uh, small business grant. So I want you guys to make sure you check that out. All you got to do, guys, if you ever go to Mr. Short Dollar on YouTube, you Google it, you can go to the grant playlist, all the grants are listed. And then I want to make the announcement now, and I, um, I will make it at the end of the show. I got premiering. It's a hot ten thousand dollar grant for female entrepreneurs okay it's, it's a ten thousand dollar grant female entrepreneurs is premiering at 7 a.m tomorrow morning friday for the june 11th at 7 a.m tomorrow morning ten thousand dollar grant for female entrepreneurs is going to be running for about approximately like three weeks i think but i want you guys to hop on it but i'll bring it up again in the, uh, at the end of the show but uh uh please hop on that Thanks for all the, uh, the support we've been getting so far, Mr. Short Dollar, and everything. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm super excited and very appreciative of it. Now let's get the show short started. Before we get started, you know, as I always, want to say what's up to my awesome producers, DJ Lab. What's going on, brother? No Thursday. Hey man, hanging, hanging, hanging. I know that's right. Yeah, <laughs> then uh, also Slick 316s. You know, we um, uh, you know, man, I, I want to give a big shout out uh to Lab Slick 316 and all my family at Misfits Media, man. We've been Chopping wood for over two years, man. The no, growth. No, no, no. Four, four years. My dumb ass. I'm talking about my show. No, hey, yours four years. Three years. Three years. Hey, hey listen. See? Listen. <laughs> we got time fly. We having fun. But man, I'm just saying, we've been enjoying the fruits of the labor and everything coming into place. And you know, we all been working hard. Everybody been just doing their thing and stuff. And we've been working collectively as well. But you want to give a shout out to all my Misfits Media family, Misfits Radio, Misfits TV family. You know, just congratulations on all you guys' uh, uh, growth and, and everything. So just keep chopping wood, and everybody, y'all keep supporting us too, okay? That's right. Um, before we get started, kind of rehash my previous week, you guys. know we still in the middle of the pandemic. I was at a track meet today. Um, no one had masks on and stuff like that. We're not all the way out the woods. We have. We most of the way out of there. But we, and we're doing well. But I just want to tell everybody, just be careful out there and be safe. <laughs> Big shout out to my sons, uh, Christopher and William, both from qualified in the uh, AAU district. Uh, <laughs> AAU state. Yeah. Both from qualified in the AAU state qualified in the district today. They, uh, Christopher has the 100, 200 meters tomorrow. And I think uh, he got the 100, 100 meters tomorrow, 200 meters on Saturday. And both of them do the shot put on Sunday. So, you know, my weekend is real scripted. But big shout out to both of them for doing that. Uh, big shout out to my son, PJ. He's back at home uh, from um, AIT. So I'm glad PJ, he got back Friday. I know I mentioned that at, uh, on Change the Live last week. So he's home. We're getting ready to go to the, he got academy scholarship. He starts that in August and everything. I see my son, Torian, tuning in. Hey, listen, I don't care if he get mad or not. I'm going to give a big shout out to Motor son, Torian. <laughs> new teacher at Luella High School Geography. And he's also going to be the defensive back coach up there at Luella High School. So big shout out to him. You know, all four of my boys doing good. Who the hell got it better than Poochie? Right. That's all I got to say, you know. That's right. You know. That's right. Ain't now one of them asked me for a dollar. No, you know, ain't now one of them asked me for anything. 
They might, the MVP. They might come <laughs> bug me for a call, son, but you know, but they ain't really got on my nerve too much, you know. You the but MVP. you know, hey man. But I just wanna let all four of them know I'm proud of all of y'all, man. Y'all make me look good and stuff. So anyway, we're going to the show. What happened thinking about the show? Well, I'm getting my basic being a blueprint. I get calls all the time. Hey, you know, I want to start an LLC. I want to get my business started up. People want advice on what to do with a business. And they be from all t- different types of industries, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, before we get started, listen, guys, whatever platform you follow us on, I want to tell you thanks again. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, uh, YouTube, and everything. Thanks. If you guys got any questions that regard, uh, during the show, what we try to do is go through as much of it, take a pause and answer your questions. But if anything not related to the show, I promise you at the end of the show, we'll come back and answer all your questions, okay? That was just a little quick little housekeeping. Right, right, right. Okay. Right. Now, with that said, anybody got? Uh, no, they just saying that uh, Marie says she's looking forward to it. Mm. Okay, cool, and, cool, cool. Uh, keep it cute. Say hello. Okay, <laughs> cool, cool. What's up, everybody? Listen, also, I would advise you, I would advise you to make sure you write this stuff down. One of the best things I would uh, tell everybody to do, that's part of even going back to the YouTube channel and looking at the YouTube videos, I have the links in all the different platforms that we have from Instagram, social media, I mean, not social media. Facebook, LinkedIn, all the email addresses, the office phone number, everything is in the description section of all the videos on YouTube. Guys, join the email list. When you're part of the email list, periodically we send this information out to you, okay? So make sure you go look at the email list on a, uh, on a YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Hit it, fill it out. But again, that's why all the information is there. Phone numbers to the office, all the different platforms we are. Like I said, the main vehicle we put the information out is Mr. Short Dollar on YouTube. The thing you got to do Google Mr. Short Dollar on YouTube. Mr. Short Dollar, if you get to the website, you'll see my big jug here pop up, okay? Now, again, we're talking about uh, the base of being a blueprint. You guys know I'm an accountant by profession. I've been in business 20 years. I own Majestic Business Services, one-stop shop with small businesses where we do bookkeeping, tax prep, payroll, all that fun stuff along with business creations. So I get calls all the time. Hey, Deontay, I want to start this particular bit. I want to bake cookies. I want to drive trucks. I want to build sandcastles, whatever. People call us all the time, and they want to start their businesses up. They're trying to get some PPP money. They want to get some idle money, grants, funding, whatever, and they're not in proper compliance to get everything started, right? And at the end of the day, the basic uh, building blocks of the blueprint to get the business started, the devil changes, right? The only thing that has issues coming out is your patience or how willing you are to be in compliance, right? Because sometimes you get told, hey, this is all you got to do. But it's really going to come down to how willing you are to wait for everything to happen for you, right? So that's why I had a discussion with you guys tonight in regards to giving you guys my basic business blueprint, right? So I want you guys, again, if you got a piece of paper or something, go through these steps. This is one, two, three, four. This is 12 steps. And in between, going to be like some sub steps in between. But these are the basic business blueprint. For you to go from the idea to have your finished product as a business. Some things will apply to you, some may not. But in essence, these are the kind of things you need to do with getting your business started, right? The first thing, what we do, we have an idea. You have an idea in your head of what kind of business you want. We want to kind of start thinking about the particular name that you want to have for your business. When you have a particular name, everybody thinks that their idea is unique. Right. And I'm here to tell you, there's a lot of you out there. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Jackson and Sons Trucking. <laughs> Wilson family carpentry. Right, right, right. You know it's ten of y'all in the state. <laughs> <laughs> which Wilson family yeah, carpentry? Wilson. Which Wilson are we talking about? The one that's over there across the bridge around the corner over there? Mm. Gotta get a unique name, am I right? Gotta get a unique name. Or even if it's not unique, just get something that you know gonna be the stick. Try to kinda stay in the the idea of it and everything. You don't wanna be if you're gonna be if the name of the business is gonna be far out from what the particular business does, you wanna make sure that you <laughs> can craft out some kind of path where that place can get some kind of traction. And like tonight, we're talking more, we're talking structure. We're not talking marketing. We're not going to talk advertising. Not going any kind of strategy or anything like that. But we're just building, we're, we, 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 we're building the house. Okay. So once we got the house together, then we're another show we can talk about the marketing and the advertising, how to get customers, how to make money, and things like that. But we're just talking about the straight framework of getting the business together. Foundation framework. That's it. The foundation okay. and framework, right? Okay. All right. This is something when you get it done, the big bad wolf can't come and blow huff puff and blow it down. Okay. All right. Okay. I keep you getting sued. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So first thing That's you want to do. That's very important. Step one, one, make sure we create that name. Get that name together, okay? And what I always advise my clients to do, we start getting name creation. Hey, at least three. Put them in whatever order that you want as far as, you know, your likeness of it. But give yourself three names. So okay. we, when you start looking at 
getting in corporations and doing those kind of things, you find out real quick that you know somebody else might have got it. Mm-hmm. Even if you spell spell it a certain way, p- other people think the same way too. <laughs> okay. Put That's a amazing. Z, put a Z for your ass. Or, Dollar sign for your ass. There you go. Yeah, PH for your F. Oh, you know. You know, we're very creative people. And, uh, <laughs> so we, we know how to do that. Yeah, we're very, very creative people. So make sure that you have three three possible names to, uh, to go from that, right? Okay. Can we go to step two? We want to think about what kind of entity we want to set up. Do we want to do an S Corp, C Corp, LLC, sole proprietorship, partnership? How we want to do it? Guys, what I do recommend. I have a question. I know you probably going to, when you, I didn't mean to interrupt you. You did. I need for you to tell me the difference between them all. Because when I started this company, I was like, do I need to be a, or do I need to be a LLC? Or do I need to be a, or do I need to be Because, you know, we'll look at it and we'll be filling it out ourselves online because, you know, yeah. we smart. Now, that's a whole show, lad. <laughs> now, that's a whole damn show. Well, give now, me, what, well, let give me, me say the this. cliff notes. Well, the cliff notes in regards to just what your S Corp, subchapter S Corp, that's pretty much it. S Corp and LLC are both what we look at called flow through entities. And what I mean by flow through entities, when you, they're actually an entity, but when it's more when you file the taxes for those, they're actually flowing through your reporting what goes on in those particular companies. Okay. Uh, S Corporation, you'll file it incorporated the same way you would a C Corp with whatever state you're in, but you'll act for a certain type of taxation through the IRS with that. Okay. The thing of it is with that, when the money, when, the, when the actual S Corp is, is, is created, the S Corp, because you, you're, by law, a S Corp and a C Corp, you're supposed to have somebody getting a wage, a wage being a W-2 employee okay. is paying self-employment tax, which is Social Security and Medicare. Okay. Right? Okay. So what happens is the S Corp, it flows through because somebody pays Social Security and Medicare, whatever number is left after that wage is taken out, mm-hmm. That net income is just subject to federal taxes. Okay. You got me? I got you. Uh, LLC, you have the LLC, you have, you're on the hook for the federal and the Social Security uh, okay. f- for the self-employment taxes. Okay. There are differences in terms of what you can do in regards to how to set up structure-wise in regards to, and it's the same thing with a C-Corp. A C-Corp is a standalone person by itself. Okay. But you still need somebody with a wage. Like I said, this is a show in itself, but it's just well, what I want everyone to know, even with your sole proprietorship, there are different things you can do from a tax perspective, from a, a structural perspective, like in, in an essence, like with a C-Corp, if LAB put in 50% of the money, LAB can only get 50% of the profit. We don't have that kind of flexibility. Okay. With the LLC, LAB puts in, we have we can we can structure out if he put in 60% of the money, I can be getting 90% of the profit mm-hmm. for so long, We and whatever, we have the operating agreement set up. We okay. start dealing in corporations, the capital that he puts in is the capital ownership and the distribution that he gets from that. Okay. So, again, I will say this, guys. I'm an accountant. been an accountant for 20 years. I mean, again, if you talk to me, CPA, an attorney, whatever, I will err on the side of I, I know what you can do for free and just it's easy to set it up. See counsel. Mm-hmm. See counsel. Not your cousin. Seek, 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 seek somebody that's going to be a professional that explain to you because I'm going to be very honest with you. If you want to go off a TikTok video or whatever and somebody just point, this is what it is, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be in a world of trouble. Because yes. I get people all the time, I'm going to be honest with you, it, all the time giving me phone calls in regards to the state that came through an audit them. They're saying that they're supposed to be paying wages. And in essence, they don't understand the difference between a contractor paying a 1099 or a W-2 employee. They've been trying to do... 1099s because they don't understand the structural purpose of doing it and that's come back to bite them in the butt okay so seek counsel before you do that mm-hmm. remember what i always tell everybody spend the money on the front end so you don't want to be spending that money on the back end when you do it because once you start spending money while you're doing everything it's way more expensive right i'm a lot cheaper on the front end than when i got to fix stuff right that's the same thing with attorneys that's the same thing with insurance brokers when we got to fix it because there is no barrier to entry you don't need us to start. You can start without us. But if you mess up and we got to fix stuff, shit. Cha-ching. Hey. <laughs> don't get that payment plan together. <laughs> we know I ain't. Deontay Burton ain't cheap. Hey, don't be hating on my cousin who took nah. his online course. Nah, <laughs> nah, shit. Nah, when you, you know, you know what it is, you know. We hate on my cousin, Raheem. He got his online uh, certificate in accounting. Well, you know, I'm, I'm not. The, yeah. the thing of it is, though, is that 
when you when you want to be really a, a business person, let's be very realistic. You want to just be taken serious as a business person. And we know we did a show a couple weeks ago, guys. Check out a video I did in regards to are you in business, are you hustling? If you actually in business, you got to be okay with understanding that you want to get competent people to be able to help you make sound decisions, mm -hmm. right? Because that's what a, suit, a true CEO does. They try to get as, as many competent people, just like the president does with the cabinet, get as many competent people to give them credible information. And then from that point, you process it, then you make sound decisions off of it. But if you're basing every damn thing on price, because that's what everybody calls, what you charge to do taxes. Mm -hmm. And like I always say, you want a cheap man to do the cheapest person to do your taxes, you can give them your name, social, address, bank account, and you want a cheaper damn person. You know, that's, I've never, ever, ever heard one person ask me, do you got any kind of malware, spyware, right. any kind of security system? Right, right. They don't ask that. Who you got working for you? Yeah. Are they, are they, how they, oh, been, how they went through background checks? Never. Never. Okay. Never. But they always want that. So, again, we want to make sure that we, you know, you seek proper counsel. Again, I want to spin off too much here, but that step two is very important. When you pick that entity, make sure you get wise. Get sound counsel, I'm sorry, to, to help you make good decisions. Okay, we start talking about picking the entities, uh, sole proprietor, L LLC, S Corp, C Corp, et cetera, okay? Third step, acquire a tax ID number, okay? Acquire a tax ID number, EIN number, that's step three. That's done through the IRS. Just a matter of doing that. I got a video uh, coming down the pipe where I'm going to go through the steps you guys are doing that as well. Guys, just get that set up, okay? We're going through the different order steps in order to get everything done. Create the name. Create, pick the entity, then get that tax ID number. That tax ID number is your social security number for your business, okay? Protect it as such. Treat it as such. Well, you say anything you do with your social security number. There are a lot of items of videos out there, but you can get this with your, so, uh, or your business credit and stuff like that. There are a lot of things you can do uh, with that tax ID number uh, that, that, that are very, very powerful. Some things that can hurt you as well. But I really want you guys to understand these, these order steps is the proper way of going about getting a a business set up where you got the machine going so you don't have to go back and do any fixing, okay? That was step three. Acquire that tax ID number or EIN number, okay? All right? Step four. Now, when we go back, I want to, I'm sorry, let me hop back to step two. Understand this, guys. When you got the corporation, LLC, C Corp, whatever it is set up, that's done through your state. That's done through your state. All right? Always remember that. That's step two. When you create the entity, that's done through whatever state you're in, all right? Every state had different laws as far as flexibility, what they what you can and can't do, different ways incorporated. Most of them pretty much the same. All of the fees are kind of comparable, but that's done through your state, okay? Step three, get that tax ID number. Number four, this is very important, get your business license, okay? Now, here's the deal with a business license because I don't think people really understand the whole essence of having a business license. You need a business license wherever you have a physical location, okay. right? See, you know, we in Atlanta, let's use Atlanta for example. You get registered with the state one time, that'd be your LLC, right? One time, you just need that, you know. Click is incorporated, Deontay Incorporated, right? Deontay LLC. Right. Now, if Deontay got an office in Atlanta, East Point, Stop Bridge, Decatur, that's four different business licenses for each one of the municipalities that I got it. Get a business license in. So, with that said, the business license in the city of Atlanta might be $150. The one in Stockbridge may be $75. The one in Decatur may be $200. It varies. But wherever you have a physical location, you will take that tax ID number, that business incorporation, wherever your LLC, C Corp, down to that local municipality and get your business license. That's why that's step four, because you have to do those things first. Take that incorporation letter from the, uh, from the state, those articles of incorporation, the tax ID number, and wherever you have a physical location at, that's where you go get your business license at, okay? Keep that in mind. Understand it varies from municipality. What I mean by municipality, if you have to get a business license with the city or the county, that varies. Uh, pretty simple. All you got to do is get a Google search. If you whatever county you're in, what do I got to do to the business license? They may say it, it goes to, forward to the city, but that's easy information to find out, okay? Uh, if you ever have problems or anything like that, you know, call your professional. Guys, you know, like I said, that's pretty much what I do for all my clients. And if you come to us or not, you just need to make sure you get somebody to give you some sound counsel. I that's have question. a question, Bruce. Sure. Can I just get a business license for the state and cover all those municipalities? No, no, oh, okay. no, 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 no. I just ask. No, because here's the deal, and, and, and that's a good question. 
because a lot of people stop at the, they get an LLC. Everybody, they get an LLC and what they do, post it on Facebook. We're ready. No, you're not. Right. Because again, now you still you still have to get that business license because what happens is if you're actually been a vendor or you're doing operations in a certain municipality in, a, in a, any kind of audit, anything comes up. You want to be a vendor. You want to do something else, mm -hmm. whatever. They come. Where is your business license? Right, right. They're going to ask you that. So let me ask you a question. Sure. One more question. Sure. So let's say I got a business license in Fulton County. Mm -hmm. And they're having some kind of event in DeKalb County. Mm -hmm. Do I still need to, when I go to DeKalb County, to be a part of that event? I don't have a physical structure. I'm just like, say they have having a, what they call it, a taste of uh, the cab. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be a vendor there in the cab. Uh, just for that one event, maybe, maybe, you know, just for an event, do I need to get a business license in the cab for that event? You wouldn't need a business license for the cab, but the cab may acquire you to get a one day uh, uh, vendor license. Okay. okay. Just do operate. That's a good question. Yeah. And, and, and it just behooves you to be a little proactive. Most of the times, when you're doing like uh, fairs or major events like that, most of the people that are holding the event, they'll let you know or okay. give you some kind of protocol and say, okay, if you're going to be part of this, you do need to pay, you know, one-time fee to do this and that, in addition to the registration fee there, or they may incorporate all that together okay. and take care of that. So that's a good question. But anytime where you have a physical location that you need to get that business license, okay? okay. Again, we're going over. This is, I'm Deontay Burton, a.k.a. Mr. Short Dollar himself. We're talking about my the, the basic business blueprint. Guys, we're at step four, get that business license. What I do want everybody to remember with this, this is the blueprint. Some of these steps on here may not be applicable to everybody. If it's not applicable to you, just skip over it. But it's giving you the ordered steps in regards to getting everything done. Now, I'll explain to you why you need to get these particular things done, okay. okay? It may vary from industry to industry. It may vary from business to business, right? But theoretically, it's still the same thing in regards to what you would need. Okay. I'm trying to get this time check. I'm sorry. I'm trying to see something to make sure I ain't missing anything. Um... What's good, my brother? I need a, oh, somebody, somebody threw me off, man. I'm looking at the message. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Somebody said, need 500. I'm like, I need it too, bro. It's two of us. He threw me off with that one. Damn. It was a question. Yeah, okay. I think that was a damn statement. It's two of us. I concur. The, the next thing, guys, what we're talking about, um, what I would advise you guys to do is, now we, we start, we, we're talking about the structure, the framework, but also being proactive with everything is, you know, logo creation. What I say about this, I don't, I wouldn't put so much into the logo, but, you know, we're going in order steps of everything we, we're getting it. Because we start, we're getting the, strength, the framework of the business together. We're also getting everything together in regards to marketing and advertising. I'm not going to tell you how to market. I'm not going to tell you how to advertise. But I'm just give you, like, the basic structure. Get you a logo. Let me explain to y'all something about logo. Give y'all one of my secrets. You got a lot of graphic artists out here. People will pay all kind of money and they'll do all this for logos. What I would advise you to do, you go to Mr. Short Dog, look at them video in the description section. It's a link to Fiverr. Fiverr is a freelance website. Hit the link that I got. That's the Mr. Short Dollar link, right? You can get you a contractor. I'm going to tell you what I do. I pay you anywhere from $20 to $50 at a time to get those freelance guys to draw me logos and they give me at least five logos at a time. So I might spend anywhere from twenty to sixty dollars, maybe a hundred dollars, at one time, and give me about maybe ten logos from two or three different artists, right. and then I pick which one I want from there. There you have. And keep in mind the thing of it is the cool thing about Fiverr, you set it on the web, so you might get a guy from Bangladesh, you might get somebody from Ireland, you might get somebody from France. I mean, you're not getting over nobody. Just the dollar stretch further, and just shit. Right. They, it might be easy done. They might got a stash. You can get it. You can buy the copyrights to it and everything. That's so, you might be too it, high, man. It, everything I do is off fiber. Lab laughs at me all the time. My theme music, everything. And I own all the rights. I don't be laughing at you, brother. <laughs> I don't be laughing at you. I be I be uh smiling at your dedication too. Hey. I've I've been on that one time and I need to go on there more because you are getting some fly stuff from there. So I ain't gonna lie. Hey, <laughs> proof is in the pudding. Hey. I know everybody tripping me how damn cheap I am, and I ain't tripping. <laughs> I've been like that since I was a little boy. But I would advise you guys get that logo. You need to find, tell somebody, you know, uh, find you somebody that's uh, uh, pretty talented that you can speak speak what you want, and they can put it on paper. So mm -hmm. you know, again, go to Mr. Short Dollar, 
Look in the description section, hit that link for Fiverr, get your freelance person. They better draft you out a logo real quick, okay? Next thing is, and this is this is one of the important things. Again, we're talking about the structure, that business blueprint, that website. Guys, you do not need any futuristic lasers blasting or whatever. You know, I was in the alumni association and um uh, everybody kept talking about we need a website to make it pop. And I was like, no, we don't, we need an informational website. Right. right. That's a layout what you do. Some things you need to have a sizzle and bustle and all that kind of right. stuff. Some things people just need to read, find out what they can do or what they can get and get the hell off of it. Right. It's just all about functionality or what your customer needs. If you're selling products, selling clothes, they need to have accessibility to your products or, 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 or clothes, any, any kind of retail. If you're doing a particular service, they need to be able to see what all you do. If you, Whatever it is, you, it just needs to be functional for that. Mm -hmm. Again, you can go to Fiverr. If you find somebody local or whatever, good and i'm not trying to sit here and dictate because again i'm i'm self-employed and i understand you know pricing and everything because anybody tell you i ain't I ain't, I ain't cheap and i don't play by no money but i will tell you this some things don't necessarily need a lot of bells and whistles now here's the deal now we'll tell you this this, this is probably the ad in the mix when we start talking about getting freelancers when we start getting the website and everything mm -hmm. understand theoretically you'll have more control with somebody's local mm -hmm. than somebody dealing with on the net so you might get it cheaper with this guy in Bangladesh, okay? He, he probably do good work. You can see a lot of their work. You can see their reviews. But the guy that's local, you got more control. You know, you can sit here and right. call, him up, call him probably up. Probably get meet quicker. Him, meet him. Yeah, hopefully get quicker responses, mm -hmm. hopefully. And then the person on the other side of the world that's way cheaper. Okay. So that's a you question. Okay. That's you question. But if you need just straight one-page information or two or three pages, this, that, and that, I would say you may not... Because, again, it will blow your mind, you know, uh, uh, just because cheaper don't mean you're losing anything as far as the product. Right. You know, it's, it's not really a drop. Uh, I want to say it's not a big drop off. It's more so, uh, to me, the uh, the service of it. Okay. Because you got some talented people in this world. True. You know, so, you know, that, Fiverr, another one, Upwork. I use those sites all the time, quick freelancers. Get them in and out, boom. But if I need to sit down in front of somebody and talk, like, you know, you say you got to get a divorce lawyer. You know, I ain't get on there. I need to cry on the show. <laughs> you need to cry. You need to, uh, she going to gonna get it out. Lawyer for crying, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Might not want to get out fine. Oh, <laughs> Lord. No. No. I got to cry on somebody's show. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Get that, get that website going, okay? And again, like I said, again, with the website, don't be so caught into things that are not necessarily for your business. If you need, if you got a resale business, get something that's con con conducive to be able to you know, show your products and everything. If you're doing a service business, you want something informational wise, you just got a business where you're doing like, you know, community work or services like that. You just want to have, we can promote that. You got functionality in regards to if you're taking donations, selling products. You got all that e-commerce stuff, all that stuff set up for you. Mm -hmm. You need to be functional and responsive. But always remember what the website does is it levels the playing field with you and the big boys. See, if you're selling sodas and Cokes, they know co they see Coca-Cola, but if they can go to your website, okay, all right, they look, whatever. Right. And you'd be a one-room operation. Right. You know, but that website levels the playing field, right? Because at the end of the day, they see the same thing that they see to them because they're not going to nobody's factory, right? Right. So just kind of keep that in mind, all right? They're not going to Amazon in the garage. Oh, absolutely not. When he first started selling them used books. Yeah, absolutely not. Absolutely <laughs> not. Next step. The email address. Now, here's the deal. I know a lot of y'all like y'all gmail.com, and I know a lot of y'all like y'all yahoo.com. Hi, mail guys. We want to get a, a, a valid business email address. And the reason why I put email address after web address is because when you get your domain, you know, cookies.com, deontay.com, when you buy a, a domain to set your website up, you also get forwarding email addresses, right? So when you purchase the, the domain, you get a forward email address, whatever your email address, such and such at Gmail, such and such at Yahoo, whatever, that domain can be set up. You can When you go to GoDaddy, HostGator, whatever uh, company that you got a domain from, they have those forwarding, email, forwarding domains for your email address. Go in there. You can go, if whatever you use, go there to HostGator, and you say, I want to use a forwarding email, it'll show you how to do it. You then can go right into the Gmail or in the Hotmail. Is Listen, I don't know any damn thing about computers. So if my dumb ass can figure it out, 
Anybody can figure it out. You can go in there, tie it in. So when somebody sends a letter to info at DeontayBurton.com or dburton at DeontayBurton.com, it will be sent through that particular forwarded email and go straight to your Gmail address. Mm. You want to look as professional as possible. Awesome. You want everything about perception. Everything about perception. So if we go from that place, now we it changed from being Mr. Charlie that can fix decks or paint a house good to, damn, that's, you know, Bluebird Painting Company. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Now it ain't Mr. Charlie no more. Yeah. Mr. Charlie, no, it can't be Mr. Charlie. Right. Because, you know, they, this is a company. Right, right. But it's Mr. Charlie. Right. But, and that's the kind of thing that we want to make sure from perception-wise, we look as credible as possible, right? So we all, when we, we're in business, we want to be credible and verifiable, right? We want to make sure we're looking, we, we, uh, uh, all our ducks in a row, as far as what we have set up, we got all the certifications and everything, and then also what it can be verified, right? They can go online and make sure this is incorporated. They can see that you got these licenses and stuff. We want to be both of those, okay? So again, we get a, you know, we're talking about an email address. That is so important. We start talking about going next level, as opposed to them seeing something to Gmail, because then you're looking like as a person that's hustling, that's trying to grow as per like shoot, they already in place. Right. It's extremely simple. Again, they just straight up once you that, that's again why I brought it up after the web uh, the website. Once you purchase that domain, all those forty email addresses is on there. And for whatever uh, uh, that you use for your domains, like the go host daddy, I mean not, not host daddy, go daddy, host gator. I know there's a few more out there that you can buy. Yeah, you can buy domains from uh, uh from from Google. But when you get them, they have that thing set up where you can forward those emails. You can get those particular ones with that same domain name, attach it to your Hotmail, to your Gmail, to your Yahoo, and nobody ever see that. And when you, even when you send emails, you will have that uh, forwarded email set up as that. So it's not coming from such such a Gmail. It's coming from info at DeontayBurton.com. Okay? That is so simple to do. And we're talking about something for damn 12 the twelve to twenty dollars that you can do every year, and then again we level the playing field, right? right. We get that structure together, right? We want to look like that business, look like that incorporation, and don't necessarily look like somebody out here hustling, right? Yeah. It's all about perception. Be it, it's not, and you know, here's the deal: we got to get out of it. Is too many times we hear people, you know, throw up. Well, you know, I'm not trying to do this, and people shouldn't um, think a certain way. It is what it is. Right. You know, we, we learned in the military. If you look square away, people perceive you being squared away. Uniform, pressure, boot shine. That's how you might not know a damn thing. But a guy that know everything, he tired as hell, dusty and shit. Nobody wouldn't want to ask him a question. He knows everything, but he don't look the part. Right or wrong, fair or unfair, it is what it is. Spend less damn time. Uh, what's that? Perception is everything. There you go. So spend less damn time talking about how the stuff ain't damn right and just get your, get your, your, your framework together, okay? Right. Right. We want to make sure. And it's just like basic aesthetics. They want to have that website, the email address, okay? Now, we're going to the next step. Before I go into there again, this is the dollar I'll host by your truly Deontay Burton. I'm about to say your truly. Mr. Short Dollar, Deontay Burton. I forgot what show I was on for a second. <laughs> Tonight's show, we're talking about the basic being and blueprint. Our channel is, you know, Mr. Short Dollar. You know, Mr. Short Dollar, we talk about entrepreneurship, business, personal finance, and real estate investing. Um, we're streaming live on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. The main vehicle with all our information on is on the YouTube channel, so make sure you Google Mr. Short Dollar on YouTube, or go to YouTube and put in Mr. Short Dollar. Over 200 videos dealing with those particular uh, subjects, personal finance, business, entrepreneurship, and investing. A lot of great videos, especially with free money dealing with banking, investing, and also a lot of grant videos on there as well. So make sure you go to the YouTube channel, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, next step, guys, is uh, uh, one I think a lot of people try to jump over because especially we have this abundance of people trying to get these funding and these PPP loans and stuff like that because they'll get that incorporated and jump to this step. But I want you to go through a path that I just gave. And I'm going to recite everything again at the end of the show. But this one right here is important. Get your bank account. Get that business bank account. I'm not going to sit here and tell you in, in regards to what's the best business bank account to do. I'm going to do a couple of videos about a couple of uh, merchant accounts uh, within the next couple of weeks. Guys, I got a, a busy June and July plan for you guys. Got a lot of information coming down the pipe. We had a real good tax season, so I had to put a lot of stuff on hold. We made a little money. Yeah. Always good to make a little money. <laughs> so make a little money, I always feel yeah, good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> you want me to come here crying? I told so, <laughs> Straight out of divorce. And, uh, <laughs> you got 
you going out there be coming in. Going out. We need some kind, you know. Shit, we need all of it going out. <laughs> but uh, get your bank account, right? And here's the deal when we start talking about business banking, guys. Listen. The worst thing I can tell you guys is to get what's the best business bank account. The best thing I can tell you is shop around and talk to, to several different banks and let them know what industry you use and what kind of uh, business you have. The reason being, what's good for one particular business is not good for another. Some businesses need banks that are very responsive, especially if in retail and sales, because again, some banks don't necessarily have the functionality in regards to online sales, different kind of credit card process can't be responsible that you need that if you're actually doing any kind of sales mm -hmm. if you're doing a particular kind of servicing or anything like that you may need a bank that's a little you know more steadier than what mm -hmm. if you're doing a bank if you are in a particular uh, business where you need a lot of uh, pre-funding uh, I'm trying to think of the uh, what's the name of that um, uh, the, the collateralized loans the uh, split funding uh, God, I can't think of not well, not 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 a split fund, but those ones where they um uh, they get a loan on your receivables. God, you know, oh my God, you know, I deal in banking. I can't <laughs> think of it. But I say all this to say again because if you're if you're actually a truck driver, a temp service, a retail store, a consultant, a tax business, you all might need a different kind of bank, and your the the onus is on you to talk to you know I would say at least five different banks. Explain, talk to the business banker and tell them what you're trying to do and have them explain to you exactly the process that you could be doing with that, okay? Because if you're doing a lot of stuff on, online, you want to make sure that you can be responsible with that. You don't want to have dealing with a damn bank that's holding your money five or six damn days. Right. If somebody can release your money in, a, in, a, in two or three days, you want to have that. Right. And, and if you, listen, if you go to your that particular bank and that person can't articulate what the hell they can do, that's your answer right there. Get the hell on in front. That ain't your bank. <laughs> now, you might go to the same bank, another branch down the street. They can do it for you. You know, again. But again, guys, the worst thing is to say Bank of America, Navy Federal. No, it's right. all about the functionality of the business that you have. Right? Right. Some things, you know, some businesses, you know, it's kind of understood that you aren't going to get money released for a couple of days. Some, look, I, get, I do it. I got to have it. Right. And it's got to be that way. Some banks don't hold you money that long. Some will hold it forever. Ever. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with it. But you need to have those conversations on the front end to find out, okay? Find that out, okay? Get that business bank. And again, that's a whole other video I told you. Meet that business banker. Talk to the business, uh, 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 the business lender. Let them know who you are. Get on their calendar. Have quarterly meetings. And like I said, that's a whole other video. Banking and business is all about relationships, guys. Mm -hmm. But make sure when you get that bank account, you get a bank, don't get the damn cheapest, make a decision of who damn charge fees or not, unless you know that it, it doesn't matter for what you do, right? Right? I can see you that, for example, with uh, the YouTube channel. We get paid one time once a month from, from uh, Google Ads, right? Mm -hmm. So it don't damn matter. Right. Right? But with the tag business, we got money coming in, coming in, coming in, coming in. Now, I got to have something that's going to move. Mm -hmm. It's not going to take three or four days to process. It's not going to hold my money for all week right you know and, and no i can't have that you know so you got to make sure you talk on the front end with these different banks to find out how responsive they are especially with business banking mm -hmm. a lot of them are not set up that way okay okay that's okay. very very important okay all right now we're getting that bank account next step guys this is very important very important right here set up those merchant services mm -hmm. set up merchant services when we talk about merchant services we're talking about your PayPal, your Stripes, your Cash Apps, Zelle, whatever you're doing. If you're using straight credit card processors, do your due diligence, do your homework to find out what's the best situation for you. Mm -hmm. Here's the deal. Rewind, say that. Okay. Sometimes I have this conversation with people all the time because, you know, we do, this time you have the tax season, especially in the fall, we do a lot of consulting work. So when I say consulting work, people come to me, I'm a fixer. You mm -hmm. know, my background. Uh, I have a bachelor in finance. I have a master in supply chain. So I'm a quantitative, analytical person. So I know how to tear up, and tear up, fix up, and put it back together and stuff. So I say all that. The people come to me a lot of times because they want the business to be run more effectively and efficiently. I give them, a, you know, just like you hear the Six Sigmas and all that stuff, the yellow belt, green belt, I fix stuff. So one of the conversations is a lot of times, especially when they do credit card processing and things, people will say, well, I don't, I'm not cool with PayPal or I'm not cool with credit card processing. 
simply we start talking about the merchant services for an easy example. PayPal is very good for processing on a small volume. Okay. If you want to use one of merchant services, they're great if you're using high volume mm -hmm. because they're cheaper with a high volume. Okay. PayPal is more expensive. You know, I mean, if, if you're only doing, you know, say under 50 transactions, I ideally 20 mm -hmm. a month, PayPal better. Right. The merchant place is going to poke your eyes out if you're going doing that low amount. But if you're doing a bigger volume, mm -hmm. it's cheaper than if you're using PayPal, it's going to charge you more. Okay. So those are the kind of things you got to kind of know from a functionality standpoint of what it is. But guys, if you're actually doing this, you don't want to be, I'm just saying, you can't have this retail store talking about them cash out for you. Yeah. <laughs> your ass. Right. Huh? All right. Now, you're doing these several transactions here and there. It's cool. Right. But you can't be selling these damn clothes talking about cash out for your retail. <laughs> and the reason being is because, you know, again, we, we can get out there. Let <laughs> me get out of joking. A lot of times when you're dealing with some of these merchant services, excuse me, they already have systems in place where you can add some of your sales tax and uh, 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 mechanisms already in place. So if you're selling them, you're already taking the sales tax and all that stuff set out, and you already had the reports already generated through those retail services. Whereas Zelle and Cash App, they're not going to be able to do that. You know, so it's just some, some things to keep in mind with doing it. Because so, if you ever get audited and never come back, and you've never went through um, anything to sit here and say, what's the sales tax supposed to be in, or different taxes you're supposed to charge, and you're just looking at the sales you had, it's going to bite you in the butt because you haven't been doing it, you haven't been keeping records, and now you got to come out all this money at one time. Then, well, hell, folks, you got to figure out what the hell you owe them. But if you use so many merchant services, they already had that stuff and put it in, okay? Uh, so, you know, that, that that's very important. But shout out to my son, PJ. PJ is tuned in. Torn was in early in Wave, man. What's up, sons? Yeah, what's uh, going on? Yeah, man, OP dog. Uh, those, those things are very, very important. We start talking about the merchant services. Do your homework. Figure it out. And if you don't know and you can't figure it out, go get somebody that can't explain it to you. Not your damn friend that your friend can be in business and your friend can be successful in business, right. but your friend doesn't know that. Yeah, yeah I mean, but they know big, but they don't know that shit. That's that whole mark. No. Get you somebody that can explain to you. Don't tell. Do not settle for you. All right. You good. Hell no. You need to know what's going on. Again, we're going to be business owners. We're going to be CEOs. we dealing with strategy and planning. Mm -hmm. We ain't dealing with damn hustle. We're working on the business, not in the business. Right. We got everybody else out there making money for us, right? right. That's how we thinking. Business owners, right? Because right. outside of that, we hustling. Yeah. We hustling. We got an LLC paper. We got here doing the damn work. We could have did that anyway. We need an LLC for that, right? We're CEOs. We're thinking, we're thinking different. We're thinking strategic. So we got to make sure we have this foundation in place, right? Next step, next step, very important. Get your PO box to get you some kind of virtual office, mm -hmm. right? This is going to serve several purposes. Number one, level like we go back to level the playing field, right? You want to have an office, well, some kind of address that they don't know where you're at because we don't want to know you at uh, 1321 Garden Circle or whatever. We don't need to know where the hell you stay at, right? right? From a legal standpoint and from a marketing standpoint, we don't need you, no one needs to know where you live, have listed as your personal address. So get that P.O. box and get you a virtual service. Well, I got to pay this for a P.O. box. I got to pay this a month for a virtual service. S.O. Part of doing business. Cost of doing business. Sunk cost. Got to pay it. Get, take it out. But again, from a perception standpoint, if you got an address for 1 P Street, 1, you know, uh, Marietta Street, whatever, now, okay, cool. Where is he at? Whatever. If you have a physical office there or not, it doesn't matter. The perception-wise of doing it. You know, so again, get that P.O. box, okay? Want to have that, okay? Like I said, again, from a, protecting yourself from a personal standpoint, and also, well, oh, man. Oh, I need this, man. This, <laughs> I run my damn mouth. This Johnny Walker Blue, man. Put that fire real quick. Said put it out. <laughs> <laughs> Me scotching the cigar, boy. Ain't that know, better. Right? Yeah, but, the best combination, mm, right? But I run my damn mouth all night. <laughs> but that, um, uh, that P.O. box is very important when we start talking about getting everything together. Getting that P.O. box, get your virtual office, okay? Next step. Super, super, super important. And this, I'm putting this before I even put what the hell I do on there. Get you a, quite a good liability insurance. Get you a good liability insurance. Do not skip on the damn liability insurance. 
people want to sue the shit out you so quick in this damn society. Every day. Every damn day. <laughs> every hey, day. every damn time something you're wrong with your taxes. What you do? What you what what what, what, what? oh man? Oh man. You get you a good liability insurance. Get you a good liability insurance to protect you and protect your business, okay? We again we're building the framework, we're building the structure to protect you, create a credible business. You want to make sure you got a good liability insurance. What I suggest to everybody do when they find you a decent insurance broker. What an insurance broker is, an insurance broker has a bigger database, just like you deal with a mortgage broker. You can go get a mortgage from a bank or whatever, but a mortgage broker, just like I me, mean, insurance broker, just like a mortgage broker, they have this big database of all these different insurances. They can, they got marine insurance, they got professional insurance, they got retail insurance, they got, they got all these different databases of different kind of insurance you need. And they can find you out of that pool, probably the most affordable, the most credible, or the best for your particular business. Find you a good insurance broker, let them know what you do. Don't trip on it because, again, here's the problem. I keep saying to everybody, you can have your business without having insurance. But if your ass ain't got, you ain't got insurance to protect you, it's going to mess every damn thing up. Okay? If, you, if you, you're you human, you will make mistakes. It's not an issue if something happens, it's when something happens. And when something happens, are you going to be prepared? I give every tax client I got, I pay a lump sum. Every tax client I got, they got errors and omission insurance, all of them. They got all kind of stuff. They don't even have to damn call me. I already got a premium set up for every damn return. I don't even charge you for it. They're ready to go. Yeah, they're ready to go. So something wrong, something come back, get audited, call that number, you protect you up to five grand. Mm. Right? Right. Anything else over there is you, but for the most part, they cover you that. Somebody got to speak to the IRS on your behalf, all that stuff is there. Cover yourself, protect yourself. You know, had a guy supposed to do the work over there at my house. I said, man, what's your insurance or whatever? He said, well, no, you got to worry about it. You know, you know, uh, he told me that he was putting on that if he get hurt, you know, he can't sue me. I said, no, nah, what the hell if you mess something up? I want to, what if I want to sue your ass? Right. Why you need to do that? <laughs> you know, you might cut off half my house. <laughs> Set that damn thing on fire. So you something, you know, and, 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 and just to, to, to look at me like I was crazy, you want to have those things in place just to protect you as a business owner. Mm-hmm. Stop looking at all this, I got to spend that, I don't need, you don't need them. Tell you, most cases you don't need unless you get certain contracts that require you to have it. But overall, most times you don't need that. Mm-hmm. You don't need those contracts drafted by a real attorney out of Google. Right. You don't need that. You can get you a quick books and try to do it yourself. You don't have, you have, you guys have no idea. How many people come to me on a yearly basis have bought QuickBooks, call me in to look at this, whatever the hell they got, and want me to fix it? Mm. And they don't understand. Look, man, we could have did this on the front end. Right. You know, because for me to fix that, it's, man, uh uh-uh. Y'all, it's, it's a whole different kind of rate. So I say that to say it's a whole lot cheaper. Look for those insurance brokers, guys. Look for those insurance brokers. And, and, and tell them what you're trying to do, and they have that database. Okay, get a good liability insurance. Would you would you um, would you suggest? And I, I'm not saying you're gonna say who the best, but I'm saying would you suggest that they look for insurance bro- smaller insurance brokers who may deal with smaller businesses or the big guys? You know, I think most I think most most insurance brokers are small any damn way, maybe three to four, three to five man operation. Okay. Because most of the insurance brokers are smaller, but they're going to go to the big guys okay. to get a policy. Okay. That makes sense. I got what you're saying. I get, they, yeah, you know, they most of them are small any damn yeah, way, right. yeah. Right. So theoretically, that's what you're dealing with, a smaller person, but they're going to okay. go to the big guys. They just got the database. Okay. That's the difference with them. Well, if you go to Bank of America, Bank of America, you're dealing with them. Right, right. Well, you go to the broker, you're dealing with Bank of America, Chase, such and such uh, yeah, yeah. farmers and all you know they, they got everything right so that's the thing the, the 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 benefit of going to bank of america is that you probably already have a relationship with them mm-hmm. and it may be easier to get it done right but if you don't have no necessarily have a straight up a quote-unquote relationship with somebody that's when you'll uh, do that but again it's usually cheaper you go to a broker anyway because we give they got the, the, the pool mm-hmm. of products and they you know we're doing that that's in my experience of doing it um Next step, and this is the last one, guys. And again, there are some things we can tie in and out, but this is probably we start talking about the framework. We done went through the whole step, and I'm rehash everything. The last step, social media platforms. Critical, critical, critical. A lot of people say all the time, man, I gotta do better on this, I gotta do more of this, that, and that. Listen, 
everybody live off their phone now. Mm-hmm. And the sooner you can realize that, the better off you can be as a business person. People want information, and they want information fast. Quick. <laughs> they do not want to sit here and wait. They don't want to watch no, no, no. 30 second video. No. Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. And you got to be right there to deliver everything they ask for. Right. right? It's not about what you want, it's what people want, okay? That's what everybody wants. Mm -hmm. And you got to really understand that a lot of folks just don't want, they don't want to get down with that. That's it. So, again, we want to make sure we got all the social media platforms. We rest with all the different Google, Yelp, and all that kind of stuff. Accessibility, accessibility, accessibility. Mm -hmm. People just want to pick up their damn phone. And see what cookie, happens. Cookie company near me. Tuxedo company near me. Mm -hmm. And ask, you better be not paid that money. And Google ads, Yelp, different things will come up on their phone. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. If I pay Google $300 a month for advertising, hell, what that one tax return? Cool, I made my money back. Don't be sitting there like oh, they want this. And <laughs> don't be so damn cheap. You 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 can't afford that stuff because you're charging damn uh uh, uh twenty dollars tax returns. <laughs> <laughs> the thing though now though is that people have to realize that um advertising rates are going down because of because everybody doing everything on their phone, because everything's on social media like just radio itself, like regular FM station, you know, they would charge twenty five or thirty thousand dollars for a spot. Now they they down yeah. to two and three thousand know, dollars. You know, you know, it's funny you said that loud. V one hundred three. I just just straight up back in oh three, mm -hmm. I was paying three thousand dollars for probably about twenty spots. Mm -hmm. Twenty spots. They give them down to fifty spots, and I'm I might be off with my numbers. Yeah. I ain't too damn off. Right. You know the same thing, web stuff like that. Fifteen hundred, and that can be negotiated. Right, it's half for more. Wow. Because why? You got all these platforms: YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. That's free. Free, right? That you can see and post all this. That even if you run the ads on Facebook and Instagram, you actually personally they give you the 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 good part. You can pick your own uh, mechanism of how you want your information to go. Mm -hmm. The bad part is too, if you don't know how to do it, you it's gonna be, be tough. You're, you're wasting money sitting in the wrong place. But my point is, go back to our word, accessibility, mm -hmm. to do that. You got to get those social media platforms. You got to get out there. You don't have to go out there eating, you know, raw eggs and throwing pie on your face and stuff right, being right. silly. But at the end of the day, you got to have some kind of mode where people can get accessibility to you and your business. It's how the world works. Right. It's not about, again, what we say all the time, the customer is not always right. But the customer is what? Always paying your ass. And the, the minute you forget that they're not paying, that they are the ones paying you, you're going to be sitting in the pole house. Right. We got to make sure we keep that in mind. It's not about what you want to do. What we said last week, keep what you want to do as your hobby. hobby. Keep what your customer want to do as, as your, your business. business. You right. got to. You get caught in all this damn thing. I want to do this. I want to make this. I want to make this. But nobody want that. But the damn thing you do the least of, everybody right. want it like hotcakes. Right. Well, I ain't really feeling that. Who give a damn what you feeling? Yeah. Money talk. Right? Right. Money talk. You trying to sit here and do all this kind of no, hell no. We we work for money. <laughs> That's something we work for. It's it's love. It's it's different for me. Nah, no. you ain't making no money. <laughs> Shit. That should sound good. When you sound, making money. It sounds like Shit. love when that when Let's that see. when that mortgage get needs to be due and you mm. four months behind, your wife packing up. <laughs> hell no. Uh -huh. <laughs> hell no. It's a different thing you go in that bank. Hey, Mr. Burton. Hey, hey. what you got on today? Oh. So when you go in there, what you want? Right, right. What you want? <laughs> yeah. What you want? Yeah, it's a different when they know your name. Huh? Huh? It's your personal banker, uh, 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 Johnny's right hey. over here. Come. There you go. You ain't got to go to the, to the, uh, the counter. There you go. They there pull you in office. Hey, come on now. <laughs> and it's not that difficult to get there. And I want all you guys to be super successful in going there. And listen, tonight we talked about the basic business blueprint, guys. We near the end of the show, something to rehash everything. Again, just to talk about it again, I am Deontay Burton, a.k.a. Mr. Short Dollar himself. You know Mr. Short Dollar. We talk about personal finance, business, entrepreneurship, and real estate investing. Streaming live now on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Make sure you go to the main video and follow us on all the social media platforms, guys. But the main platform that we put our information out is the YouTube channel, Mr. Short Dollar. You can Google Mr. Short Dollar or Mr. Short Dollar on YouTube. It'll pop up. you see my handsome face pop up subscribe to the channel over 200 videos 
Got an awesome, you know, have everything segregated as far as entrepreneurship, business. Check out that playlist for the grants. Over 150 grants listed currently. Got one, you know, I, and I bring up later in the show, a lot of great information coming out with the grants and stuff. Uh, but really follow us on there. Subscribe to the channel. You look in the description section of all the videos. A lot of great information on those as well. Um, what am I forgetting? But even when going back to tonight's show, I gave you guys my basic business blueprint, which is a blueprint of what you need to do to create a sound structural business. Are there some things missing? Yeah, and that may vary from business to business. But overall, if you follow this blueprint, it's what I give all my clients when we do their business incorporation. If you follow this blueprint, this will cover you for the most part of having a sound structure with your business. Start over there. Everything. These are 12 steps. The first one is, number one, create the name. Number two, pick what type of entity you're going to have. Be it sole proprietorship, LLC, C Corp, or S Corp. Number three, get your tax ID number, right? Number four, acquire a business license. Remember, when you acquire a business license, you got to have a business license wherever you have a physical location. Going back to step two, remember that LLC, that the entity has to be registered with your state. Going to step four, the business license, wherever you got a physical location at, okay? Number uh, Step five, get you a logo. Don't go with spin or anything like that. Go to Mr. Short Dollar, look in the description section of the video. Hit that Fiverr link. Follow that Mr. Short Dollar uh, link. We'll set up from there. Guys, you can find you some very affordable, talented, talented uh, uh, logo designers that can uh, put your idea on paper and give you that at a great, great, great rate, okay? Next thing is get your website. Get your website. Make sure we level we level in that playing field. There's no difference between us and the big boys. Once you go to our website, you go there. Okay, we look just as good. Next step, get that email address. Get that email address because we want to look more credible, more verifiable. Remember the steps I gave you guys in regards to using that forwarding email address where you can tie in your Yahoo, Hotmail, uh, uh, what's the other one, Gmail, whatever. You can tie that in to that forwarding email address. So now instead of, you know, you have such Deontay at gmail.com, now it's info at DeontayBurton.com, dburton at uh, DeontayBurton.com. Easy set up. You can, most of the um, the actual uh, email uh, companies will show you how to do it. So will the host company. Also, easy to find the videos on YouTube to teach you as well. Next step, get you a bank account. Remember what I said. It's all about functionality of your business. Go around, have conversation with these different banks to find out what they do. Don't just ask people what's the best ba bank account for business. That's not a damn question. What's the best bank account for trucking business, for consulting business, for retail? Have those conversations with people. And most of the time, people can't ask you that if they're not in your particular business. Now, if you know somebody in your industry, of course talk to them. But outside of that, business, a business account is not the same. It's all about functionality, what that particular bank can do for you, right? Next step is get that old merchant service together, the PayPal, the Cash App, the Zelle, all that stuff together. If you're doing straight retail, we want to make sure we got those credit card processes in. Negotiate good rates or anything like that. If you don't know how to do it, what we say, go get a professional. Somebody give you advice on how to do that, okay? But make sure you got all that stuff because we want we want to have always have access to our damn money. I go back to 2003 when your boy started doing taxes. I'm doing your taxes, and I gotta wait for you to get your refund and pay me. <laughs> call me Bozo the Clown. I'll call. Hey, I done did your three hundred dollars or five hundred dollar tax return, and I call and I hear boo boo boo. And I'm calling, and my dumb ass calling number over and over again like this shit ain't off. <laughs> yeah, hell no, you know. What they tell me? Well, I ain't got number chicks. Get him. I take the picture. <laughs> there is no way I can't get your money. There is no way, unless you ain't got it. We take money in the car. You want to make sure you, that any way that your customer, and it's a matter of convenience because it's a lot of business. I just see this all the time. I have these conversations with people. You know, well, we only take this, we only take that. Shit, man, how, who says I have that? And you losing money. Mm -hmm. Have as many ways possible to get your damn money because at the end of the day, all those processes are going to do what? Go back to that same damn main bank account. So don't slack on any way. Sign up for Zelle, Cash App, any kind of merchant service you can have, sign up for them all because you want to always have access to your money because it's just a process of uh, intermediary that's going back to your account. So don't you deny anybody lose any money on something you ain't did, okay? All right? That next step is get a post office. I get your post office box or get your virtual office. We don't, no one needs to know your personal address. We don't want any kind of mail, any kind of thing you're doing that. We want to level it out so people see that one piece three address or whatever. You, you're looking like, okay, he's primed in the office space or whatever. It's from an aesthetic standpoint and it's just a protection you standpoint. Don't have nobody knowing your damn 
address. Okay? That's right. We want to make sure we get that out. Get it off, okay? All right. The third, the last, no, I'm sorry, not the, uh, the next step is acquire good liability insurance. Protect yourself. Protect yourself. Accidents happen. And it's not if, it's when. And when, when, when happens, we want to make sure that you're protected as possible, okay? You don't want to lose everything you own because you didn't. People think, because I got an LLC, you can't sue me. Bullshit. I'm telling you now. Because I sue you, I'm suing you, your business. I might sue your wife, your daughter, your kids. The judge going to tell me who the hell I can't get them. Hey, shit. Hey, look me up in these court files. Shit. Judge going to tell me who the hell I can't get money from. <laughs> I'm telling you, yeah, you, you, you ain't telling me shit. The judge going to tell me. Mm. <laughs> But the judge gonna tell me that. Right, right. So I say that to say, make sure you protect yourself. We don't want to have no kind of all that insurance and stuff there. We want to be able to cover ourselves. So again, if a mistake when or when a mistake is made, do let the claim get done, get taken care of. Boom, we keep it moving, right? And the last step on social media platforms, the Facebook, the YouTube, the Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, whatever. They free. Take advantage of it. Right. Take advantage of it. Spend your spend your two or three things uh, times. Uh, I'm sorry. Two or three days out of the week, guys. I talked about it before. A product. I'm gonna do a video on it called Hoop Suite. Um, Hoop Suite is a, a intermediary for different uh, social media platforms where you can tie them all again and just set your calendar up, and they'll blast all of them. I do it all, use it all the time, but use it re religiously for years. There are all kind of mechanisms out there for you to, um, for the small business to move more effectively and efficiently. And you don't have to have a hundred person operation, right? But you guys got to be willing to take the time to find out about them products. Put the money behind it, which is not going to be that much. But again, sometimes people just say, I don't want to spend it because they don't feel like it's worth it. And now you post it on Facebook. Remember, when you post on Facebook, you post on damn Twitter. The only people going to buy your stuff is the damn people you're friends with. And you don't know if they want it. The people that want your product, you don't know. So the onus is on you to find them and get you your product. Focus less on that. And when you get that, when you really can comprehend that, your family and friend will support you with good job. You'll keep doing it. They'll share it. It ain't buying a damn thing. The person that needs your product, the person that needs your service, is not your friend. Always remember that. Because when that person that needs your product or service is your friend, most of the time they're going to need a discount. So I'm telling you, make sure that you get you, you focus on that, okay? All right? And that's it for tonight. That's that basic business blueprint. Listen, guys, I want to remind you guys, at 7 a.m., I got a $10,000 grant for female entrepreneurs coming out on the YouTube channel. Be on the lookout for it. Go to uh, Mr. Short Doll on YouTube. Subscribe to it. Ladies, I need you guys to hop on. We're going to run about three weeks. $10,000. Easy. Easy money, guys. Over 150 grand list on Mr. Short Dollar. Guys, I need you guys to go to the channel. Take advantage of it. All kind of other great information dealing with, you know, business analysis, profit analysis, how to set your prices, how to get insurance, how to do deals. All those videos, all those shows, how to get a business loan. All those videos been on there. How to set your budget. I got all those videos on there. Come on now. <laughs> and don't be listening to no damn by the way, making no damn money, telling you what the hell the damn do. Right. I'm not going to make no videos of me on some rented yacht and uh, <laughs> shit. Hang with people I don't even damn know saying, well, this is what you do to make money. No, this real right here, I'm going to tell you, I done, I done got my scars, guys. I done got my scars. I'm giving you free, great information. You can Google me. You can look me up on LinkedIn. Everything here is verifiable. I'm telling you guys that. Listen, look at the videos. It might not be the most exciting. I'm not going to lie to you about this. You can do this. You can do this. And now you can make a million dollars. Hell no. You got to get some scars. Three-year lab just said, we went two years. Two years on Mr. Short Dollar before we made a dollar. Right. Dedication with a capital D. Mm -hmm. And the D is for Deontay. <laughs> <laughs> But serious business, I want to tell all y'all, I love you guys. I appreciate all the love and support. I really, I can't thank you guys enough for all the help you got. Now, before we go any further, what's up, Misty? Before we go any further, was there any questions or anybody had? There was no questions. Um, Jay, Jay Nader Harden. Jay, hey, Jay, hey, Jay Nader Harden said, good job. Great information and thank you. No, no, the pleasure is all mine. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Check out all the videos we got. Anybody else? Nobody else? No listen, hey family, listen. Make sure you go to that YouTube channel. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Mr. Short Dollar. Two hundred videos, guys. 
damn near anything you need from insurance, business insurance, life insurance, all kind of great information and more great information to come. Make sure you check out that, ladies. Make sure you check out that video premiering at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. $10,000 grand for, for female entrepreneurs. I need y'all to get on it. Love you guys. Stay safe out there. Be on the lookout for more great information. Mac, again, I thank you guys. I can't thank you guys enough. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon. The videos on business credit, all that stuff coming next week. I got videos uh, in regards.